I'd like to welcome our next speaker, um, Ibrahim Hamad, someone whose story, when I first heard, actually gave me serious goosebumps, um, which was back early in the year um, during a, something called the Muslim Collective that was held in Welting. with such tremendous um, life experiences. Um, you would think it's straight out of a movie, uh, really. I worked as a minimum wage cleaner, and after leaving his home in Eritrea, and spending years in a UN-run refugee camp, and today is a member of the Labour Party. So without further ado, um, Ibrahim Amr. Uh, thank you, Zainab, uh, for that kind um, introduction. Um, I just want to acknowledge all of you, um, and, and the most importantly, thank you for giving me an opportunity to be part of this um, important um, corridor discussions. Uh, can I uh, first start my, uh, my remarks uh, with a quote, uh, one of my favorite quotes of all the time uh, from uh, Desmond Tutu of South Africa, um, when he says, if you are a neutral in situation of injustice, you have chosen to the side of uh, the oppressor. I think that sums up the whole. Um, thing about uh, Palestinians. I come from a country that was um, under occupation for more than 100 years, um, Italians, British, and then uh, Ethiopia. And uh, I've seen as a kid um, the effect of, 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 of oppression um, and the injustice and the human rights violation in my own country. But this is not to say that uh, that was um, uh, what's happening to Palestinians today is 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 beyond beyond anyone. Um, we are in 2021. We are not in 80s, 70s, or 60s. 2021. <clears throat> My first um, uh, I first became aware of the Palestinian issue when I was a kid. Uh, my father happened to be one of, um, who was one of the people that who followed the Palestinian issue. And he was always, um, the Arabic radio was, BBC was always um, on in our home. And I grew up listening to that. And the, my first um, encounter of, um, the first time I saw the brutality against the Palestinians was when the Muhammad Duras, I was a kid myself, Muhammad Duras story became, um, a global news and the way that he was uh, murdered with cold blood, uh, trying to hide behind his father. And then uh, to me, the second symbol for um, the gross human rights violation against the Palestinians is what happened just uh, about three, four years ago to Ad Dawabisha family. The whole family was burned um, while they were sleeping. And there is only one young child survived who is. I think who should be a constant reminder to international community about the injustice and the gross human rights uh, violations against Palestinians. And, and I think that puts the whole um, international community human rights on shame because um, the fact that one country could do all these things with impunity and with no accountability is quite, um, it's quite, it's quite sad, um, to be honest. And I've got in my home uh, a poster that um, on my wall um, that says, uh, the Palestinian children are stronger than occupation. And this is um, children trying to stop tanks in the, one of the, uh, the most sophisticated uh, military hardware using the stones in their hands, just using the bare hands. And, and, and then again, every, this is, I, Gave it, to, gave it to me by uh, someone from a union movement and I put it on my wall as a constant reminder. I wake up in the morning, I look at it and uh, just a reminder what the Palestinians go through um, every day, uh, what the Palestinian people go um, through every day. Um, to mention some of the gross human rights violation uh, uh, land grab um, and, and with that uh, uh, brutal eviction of, of, of families and the blowing up houses with, with the TNTs and the most so sophisticated weapons, brutalization of women, children every day. And this is something, this is not something that the Israeli government hides. It's, it happens and we, it's right on our screens every day. 
and and the fact that um, all this human uh, the United Nations resolution is one after another after when, since 1947 after nearly 60 nearly 70 years there is no effect on Israel Israel continue to do this and as it was impunity um, was again with no accountability um, Middle East is is uh, the as long as the Israeli-Palestine conflict continues, and then uh, the international peace and the stability, um, the security and the peace and the stability of the international community is always going to be a question. It's not. It's not going to be achieved. Um, at the heart of the conflict since 1947, there is a, a, a human rights of about uh, millions of people, um, but with that. Uh, the two million people that who are living in Gaza um, and who every day um, has to stand up and not knowing whether they're gonna make it to the evening and whether they're gonna, uh, if they go into the bed, they don't know whether they're gonna wake up alive or not because anything would happen. Israel can start, could start uh, bombing and, and, and killing them. And then this is not to mention that, that there is no medical supplies, there is no enough food, there is no, it's a complete blockade of uh, 2 million people in, a, in the space that could be as big as the lower hut, um, um, if I'm not mistaken. And that this is, this is again, um, uh, uh, to me, look, I can. We can all uh, keep saying we can. We can keep talking and talking, talking about that. I think the evidence is quite there. And uh, to, the point is, I think what the international needs to do. What do we all need to do? What's our role? Um, I mean, to me, as, as someone who is who grew up watching uh, my own injustice and my own people, and as someone that who watch uh, uh, grow up watching Palestinians being brutalized being evicted um, every day Israel um, uh, building uh, thousands and thousands of illegal settlements illegal houses and that we watch that every day that's a constant reminder that we all as a human race that we need to say enough that we need to say um, uh, we, we need to stand up and voice our concerns and we need to stand up with Palestinians we all need to say enough is enough I'm one of those people that that um, from day one, I think it was 2014 when I first got a chance to actually get involved in, a, in, a, in supporting the Palestinian issue. And through Vic Uni, where I was studying, um, I came to know people like Shahad and, and other activists. 2014 war from the beginning to the end, we marched every Saturday um, uh, from uh, Kiva Street to Israeli embassy, basically chanting. There were days that the number could go up to a thousand people. Uh, so uh, I just wanted to say that those of you who come from the Palestinian background, that you are not alone. And all of uh, those of all who are uh, justice loving people, we all um, uh, fight behind you. And uh, we all will continue to speak up. We all. Uh, we'll continue uh, to say enough is enough. Palestinians, after 60, 70 years, they deserve it justice. Palestinian refugees deserve it to go back to their homes. Palestinian farmers deserve it to farm their lands and to cultivate their products without being brutalized. Palestinian women have a, have a right not to worry about when the child leaves home in the morning, that they, they must not worry whether the child is gonna come back alive or as a body. And the Palestinian children need to wake up in the middle of, uh, the, have a right to wake up, to go to the school without a threat of being killed, without a threat of being brutalized. And, and, and uh, with, that, with that note, I just wanna say that if, if Palestinians cannot get justice and what they deserve. And as I think as human race, we will never see a peace and the stability the world is that, that dreaming, that we all are dreaming of. And that we will continue to see the conflicts. We will continue to, because this is the issue that's important to 1.9, uh, nearly to 2 billion uh, uh, Muslims and the Christians. Christians that who perceive 
um, Jerusalem or Qudus as also their holy land as much as Muslims do. Norera tena koto, tena koto, tena tato kato, wassalamu alaikum.